I think it's good. Uh, matter of fact, for years and years, the first question when I tell this story, every, almost everybody says this is, why haven't they made a movie? And uh, there actually was one movie in uh, 1987 called um, Sworn to Silence, uh, starring uh, Liam Neeson played Garrow, um, Dabney Coleman and Peter Coyote were the attorneys. Really? I never knew that. It was a television movie. Um, it was kind of a flop. Because of intellectual property rights, they had to change the names and they had to change the location. So the girl was in the movie was found in a rock quarry in, in uh, Pennsylvania. Um, but uh, attorney Armani, uh, he worked, he worked on, it was based on his book. And uh, so it's still available today. So originally it was supposed today. to be about, it was based on Garrow, but they It was based on Garrow, but because of uh, the complications with its intellectual property rights, which are, you know, the, Y y they would have had to pay more money. I don't know all the politics behind it or the legal ramifications, but but yes, 1987, uh, Sworn to Silence came out. You, you can still see it. The Life Lifetime Movie Network plays it occasionally. And uh, matter of fact, uh, Dab Dabney Coleman won an Emmy for portraying Belgie. And, uh, and so Liam Neeson. Portrayed Liam Neeson played Garrow in the Garo. wheelchair. Interesting. In one of his first, uh, one of his early appearances. And uh, I, I think it's, available for purchase on the internet too. Uh, you can get the DVD um, of that, Sworn to Silence. Uh, so that was the that was the only movie and, uh, um, but like I said, everybody wonders why there wasn't a movie, but uh, in 2016, I did a uh, production for National Public Radio uh, on a, th a podcast on Radiolab. And when that aired, uh, several people uh, called from Hollywood. Uh, one of them was a very powerful guy named uh, Noah Hawley who did the Fargo series, the Fargo television series. Mm -hmm. And uh, last I knew he was working on a movie. Um, I haven't had any updates recently, but he pursued the project um, along with another, another producer. Um, so, so it is starting to come back to life a little bit movie-wise, but Laurie's will be the, f the you know, the f the first movie about the crimes and um, um, the original Sworn to Silence was mainly about the uh, defense team's tactics yeah. and the le legal issues. Um, so you so think other projects may be in the works on this? Uh, they are, whether they get done or not. Um, how this works, uh, uh, so many people buy manuscripts and books and uh, they purchase the rights to them and don't make the movie for, for many reasons, but, but an attempt has been made based on the Radio Lab production. I know Noah Hawley purchased the transcripts from the Radio Lab and he also purchased the court transcripts. So so it has got underway. Uh, a lot of times these things don't get finished, but but yes, there, there are big time people. Uh, matter of fact, I sold my manuscript, uh, well released my manuscript to a, to a film producer and Unfortunately, when he found out Noah Hawley was doing the same project, he yeah. dropped it because, uh, um, I guess in Hollywood, if because this guy's so powerful that uh, he could get all the actors and all the revenue needed, so it would knock out. No one would support the other guy, the lesser guy. So, so he's like the king of Hollywood. Uh, he did, uh, I think he did the King's Speech, and he did uh, Mr. Holmes, which was recent Sherlock Holmes thing. Uh, um, so yes, there are other movies, um, and Lori, she, she had done a movie called Mindville a few years back, right. and uh, now she's working on, on, on this. I was impressed with the, uh, I saw the trailer, and um, the authenticity of uh, the time period was very good. Uh, she had the state police cars, which, which were black and whites back then. Um, and she's, just, she's gone to great pain to, to try to make it as realistic yes, as possible. Yes, yes. Um, so, so yes, I, I was impressed with the trailer, so I haven't been to the set live, even though she's invited me, but so, so no, I, I applaud her efforts because uh, this is a very complicated case, and, uh, and it's very important. I mean, this was, I would argue, the biggest story at the state level in New York, you know, in the modern era. And, but stories like this, because of their dark nature and nefarious nature, they, they, you know, they, they get buried. They, people don't want to relive it. But 
if you look back, this thing lasted the whole decade of the 70s and uh, was in the papers every day, was on the news every day. And, uh, and then you did a series in, in the early 2000s on it. A yes, around the 25th anniversary, uh, I suggested, I was actually working in sports, and I suggested uh, to our crime writer that he do a look back at, at, at the case. And these guys, none of these guys were local. Um, yeah. And uh, luckily there was an editor there named Will Doolittle. And his father was a longtime owner of the um, Saranac paper, uh, the Adirondack Enterprise. Daily Enterprise. He covered this thing very well back in the day. And so Will was familiar with it. So when the crime reporter didn't do it, he said, why don't you have a sports writer do it? And you do it. You know, you know the case. So that's how I got involved. And it, it turned into a... It, won a bunch of awards and it was a high, highly acclaimed series so as we neared the 50th anniversary 45th 50th anniversary I decided to uh, start working on a book possibly um, and, that's and you're hoping to get that published yes I'm hoping to get the book published and that's where I'm at and uh, so but but it's good that Lori's doing the movie um, uh, you know like I said because of the significance of the case and the relevance today I mean you know, like I said, it's taught in ethics, ethics classes in law schools all over the world. And, and as far as the stories in the North Country, obviously just three years ago we had the prison break at Denimore, and that uh, ended up being the largest manhunt in New York State history. Bucky Phillips had been yes. Uh, yes. a few years ago, but um, so before that, Garrow, yes. of course, yes. uh, in the 70s would yes. have been the largest and, manhunt and I would say in the state that history. Technically, the, uh, not to be disagreeable, but the... Uh, Garrow Manhunt was the largest and costly for the state, only in the sense that it was only state officials. The other two manhunts, um, Pennsylvania was involved in the Bucky Phillips Manhunt, and, uh, and international and uh, federal agents were involved for, for Matt and Sweat. But this was a strictly New York State deal. Um, they refused to bring in uh, federal agents, state National Guard. Yeah. It was strictly in New York. So, so I would consider this the costliest and largest manhunt in, that New York handled solely. Um, and for the eight-year-old boy who saw the boot print that summer of 73 on the table, for you and others, but you in particular because you, you lived this, uh, this will stay with you for your entire life. This You'll, you'll never yeah. forget this chapter of, uh, yeah. of history here in the Adirondacks. Yes, and people who lived through it uh, remember it and remember it well and, and they're still interested in it and uh, you know this this sent a, a fear through the region that was just uh, uh, almost palpable you, you know and uh, at the time there was no internet no Twitter um, so we lived in vacuums between the morning newspaper and the 6 p.m. news and those days were long back then right and uh, you know you, you would hear you would get chance encounters with strangers who would tell you updates and stuff and, and all oh, the rumor mill really spread. And then they couldn't catch them. And it, it, it ruined the tourist season. Uh, in 1973, uh, heavy rains hit in the spring and early summer. And Hamilton County, the smallest county in the, in the state, the least populous county in the state, uh, they were dependent upon tourists. And, and they got off to a slow start because of the heavy rains and then right when it started to pick up the busiest uh, the first two weeks of August this has happened and shut down the tourist season 